Okay, I think we're good. Everybody, I'm hoping that we're on right now. Thanks so much for uh, joining me here this evening. We have a couple little things that didn't go quite as the way that we wanted for them to go uh, in relation to uh, making sure that we had everything live on Facebook and Instagram. Not exactly sure that why that was, but uh, you know, you'll have those glitches once in a while when you're trying to do something new. And uh, we were trying to trying to grab a little bit of Instagram and Facebook tonight, and we weren't able to do both at the same time for whatever reason. I don't know. So we're gonna, just going to keep it at this. But welcome to our first um, first live Q&A session. Um, my name is Mitch Reynolds. I'm hoping you understand that because you're watching this event live. And I am uh, running for mayor in the city of La Crosse. And I am here tonight to answer your questions about the things that are important within the city of La Crosse and um, what, uh, what I can do to um, help the city uh, and in this time and uh, move forward as well. So anyway, I'd like to get some feedback from you. Uh, this is not exactly the way I wanted it to go down. I was kind of hoping it'd be much more seamless than this, but you, you know, when you're doing live stuff, you just never know, you know? So, I'm, and I'm pretty used to that. I've done this before. <laughs> Anyway, so I had a number of questions, and tonight we were really trying to get to the heart of some of the issues that everyone is facing in relation to uh, the fallout from the pandemic and all the different uh, challenges that we're all facing. Um, I guess from just, you know, being being uh, isolated and being uh, stuck at home for a lot of people and having our kids at home for for so long throughout the year, but also all the challenges that businesses and individuals have faced with business closures and people um, not being able to maintain their jobs and all the other issues that go along with that. So that was the idea for tonight was to address a lot of those issues, but there's a lot of other things that I know that many of you would like to address as well. So I am more than open to uh, suggestions and uh, recommendations. First of all, uh, I, I have, I've, I've been really trying to uh, navigate a pathway through, uh, again, when we can talk about the pandemic, I've been trying to navigate a pathway for myself uh, for in running for office. And because typically a run for office and it doesn't matter what office you run for, whether it is, uh, you know, school board, city council, mayor, um, state legislature, uh, senator, the president of the United States. There's a lot of face-to-face -face time. There's a lot of door-to-door -door work. And the, one of the things that we wanted to do when we started this campaign was try to eliminate the apprehension that a lot of people are going to have by, by frankly, going door-to-door -door and being face-to-face. -face. See, for me, the pandemic... The issues related to the pandemic are real, and they are for a lot of people. And I want to be conscientious of the decisions that I make and how they impact you. And so that one of the things that we decided early on is that we wanted to connect. I want to connect with you. I want to connect with you, but I want to do it in a way that you also feel safe with. So pretty important for me. Well, this is one of the ways we're going to do it. Now, we are going to, there's no question, there's going to be an opportunity for you to speak directly to me. I mean, I'm not going to isolate myself in this, this room and, and not come out and see you, but we're going to try to do it in a, in a way that, um, that is, again, safe and is a way that understands the complexities of the world that we live in right now. It is, there's some, there's some complications there for sure. Um, the first thing is I want to make sure that I, I address the questions that were sent to me prior to this, um, prior to this, uh, question and answer session, because there are a lot of questions that I got and they, and they all had something to do with not necessarily what we had planned on making this, making this, a uh, um, talk making this about the talking points about, um, you know, our topic for tonight, that is the pandemic and the, and the, the resulting, um, uh, uh, tr trying to, trying to recover from the impacts of that. And whether that mean the pandemic itself or the, um, the, the problems with uh, the, the issues that are, relate to 
our children just being at home and so and and child care and all the other aspects that go along with that a lot of issues there so those were definitely some of the things that i i felt like we needed to address and there were a couple of questions in relation to that but i also there was a, a question that i got uh, early this morning that i wanted to address as well and that was what do you think of what happened in washington last night and i think it's a great question i guess it's it's an interesting question because I, I'm running for the mayor of the city of La Crosse. There is, there is a, a, it is such, it's an, an office that is the, um, the representation is, is you, for you at the localist of levels. My goal is to make sure that the streets are cleared, that the, the garbage gets picked up, that our most vulnerable citizens are taken care of, that we do everything that we need to do in a fiscally responsible manner, that our libraries are opened when we need them to be open, and that they are places where children can go when there aren't better places for them to go. The types of goals that I have are so far removed from the goals of the President of the United States and from federal politics in general, frankly. It's just, it's the simplest of things. You know, making sure the garbage gets picked up is a pretty simple thing. Making sure that your, your streets are plowed. I should be able to do that. But I did get the question, and I, and I, I want to answer the question because, I, you know what? It's, it's a remarkable thing that we're witnessing in American history right now. And it is something that, you know, I'll tell my grandkids about at some point. And maybe my kids will uh, tell their grandkids about even. And I'm, I'm going to stop short of diving deep into the politics and diving deep into how we label whatever happened yesterday in Washington, D.C. I'm going to stop short of talking about um, the insurrection and an attempted coup or whatever the labels that we put on that. What I'm going to say is that part of the democratic process that I prize so dearly is this process right here where I talk to you and, you res in, in, and we connect and we find a way to bridge our gaps and we try to uh, find a way to mediate our differences. And through that, come up with a better way to, to help our communities prosper. And I think that one of the things that we've lost in, in this nation over the last many years is just the ability to bridge our differences and come together. It is my sincere desire to find a way to do that. And I think we can. I think we really can. It's amazing how many times I talk to people, and no matter, you know, I've been talking to people for years and years and years. Before I ran for mayor, of course, I, you know, I've, I've been working for a couple of years as an operations manager for Whole Tree Structures, which is uh, involved in uh, architectural and uh, um, uh, structural work uh, in small dimensional round timber. But for many years, I was uh, the news director at uh, Midwest Family Broadcasting and the host of a news and talk program on WIZM. And we had conversations, many hundreds, thousands of conversations over years and years and years about how much we're, despite our differences, how much we're alike and how important it is us for us to gather together and to make our community an enduring one. And I hope to keep doing that. So anyway, I'm going to leave that conversation there. There's more there. There's more conversation to have about, uh, you know, people scaling the walls at the, at the Capitol building in Washington. There's no question. There's more conversation about that. There's more conversation about how we address 
And what we call that, what do we call that? Do we call that an insurrection? Do we call that a coup? Who do we hold responsible for that? There's all sorts of conversations that can go on there. No question. Those have been ongoing, and I'm not going to add anything to it here by whatever it is I'm saying. So I'm not going to try. But what I am going to do is try to answer the questions that are more pressing for you, because I know that there are so many more things that you find compelling and important in your daily life. And not the least of which is this question. Let's see, where's the one that I got? Oh, this is something that is just, uh, is just recently popped up. And it's about, if, you're, if you've been to the uh, kind of the center of lacrosse, where, uh, where Losey Boulevard meets um, Highway 33. You've, you've in, undoubtedly, over the last many, many decades, if you've lived here this long, You've seen um, the Kmart building that's been in, in constant disrepair. So there have been a number of questions that have come up about what to do with that building and how to address its future needs in the last several days. Because apparently the, the most, um, the most uh, recent plan for it is to turn it into a U-Haul storage facility. Um, so I want to address that, but there's other things that, um, you know, I've gotten questions about potholes. I've gotten questions about libraries. I've gotten questions about whether the lacrosse judges are soft on crime. Um, I just got this question. It's difficult to not hear a potential future leader not condemn what happened last night as domestic terrorist attack. Can I expand that? <laughs> this seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, and that's what I guess what I was trying to get to. And uh, Nessie, I think. I'm not sure of the name. But I think it's what I was trying to get to with that conversation. Is that I don't know exactly how to label it right less, uh, yet. I mean, my instinct is insurrection and coup. That's what my instinct is. I have always been someone who has wanted to avoid labels as much as possible. So domestic terrorism seems a little light to me. But I appreciate what you're saying there. But it does seem a little light. To me, it, it, this, when you look at the history of the United States of America and the last time that the Capitol was invaded in a way that resembled what we saw yesterday, it was the War of 1812. It is not, it is putting it, I would say putting it incredibly mildly to call that domestic terrorism. But I don't know if I have a label for it. So, oh, I, I guess if you're looking for condemnation, sure, of course, I'll do that. But I don't know if I can easily label that as, as a domestic terrorist assault of some kind or to me, Instinctively, I looked at look at uh, at what happened in Washington yesterday, as as an attempted coup of the federal government. See, I am a, a profound adherent to the rule of law. In other words, I am not prone to believe that anything is gained by burning it all down. Um, I do believe in protest and strong and forceful and vehement protest. But what we saw yesterday, that was an attack on our Constitution. Now, I, like millions of other Americans, have taken an oath at some point in my life to defend the Constitution. And I take that oath very seriously. And I would strongly hope that Many of those who were standing by and standing down, if you will, were who had potentially taken an oath to defend the Constitution, defend and uphold. I would strongly hope that they really considered what that oath meant to them. So I appreciate your concern. I am, again, I try to avoid labels as much as possible because I think that it does us not a ton of good. 
I prefer to talk about the issues that plague us and how we can address those issues, especially as they relate to our community. Um, but great question, and I appreciate that. Uh, so, it, and, and again, if there's anything else that anyone has um, in terms of questions about the events of this week, happy to answer them. It's just that I am not likely to come up with the, with the, 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 um, the label I think that you're looking for. Perhaps we'll see. I'd like to see what the fallout is. Frankly, I'd like to see who, who is, um, who takes, who takes ultimate responsibility for what we saw yesterday. So it's interesting because we, obviously when we scheduled this event and it's less an event and more of just me talking to you, you talking to me, if you want, but when we scheduled this event, it was really less, well, we did not anticipate, first of all, the potential, the, the storming of the U.S. Capitol. We didn't, we didn't anticipate that. And so our desire was to get to the heart of the issues that are, are things that affect all of us in a local way. It is has been very few times in my life where it felt like the United States itself had begun to spin out of control. And yesterday was one of those days. I mean, the ship righted itself, which is obviously good. But um, it did disrupt kind of our, our intention, our goals here. So to be fair, there are a lot of things we can discuss, a lot of local issues that we can discuss, but I'm certainly more than willing to um, to address some of the some of the concerns or frustrations or anger, all the things that you have been feeling or or have heard others express since yesterday um, when we talk about the uh, <laughs> I mean, all I can think of is the scaling of the walls, right, in in Washington. So I, I want to get to some of the questions that I've received because I think the, the most important part of this engagement is for us to talk about the things that are important to you. I want to know what's important to you because if I'm going to be mayor of the city of La Crosse, it is very important for me to understand what's on your mind. What are, what are the things that you feel are essential for us to address as a city, as a community, so that we can move forward in in um, in prosperity, in peace, in justice. How do we move forward with the dissatisfaction that's always been present about you know property taxes and about. Um, well, poverty and homelessness and the floodplain, all of those things. So Grant asked, how would you handle restrictions for bars, restaurants downtown during COVID, especially for students? Uh, Grant, I think it's a great question. And um, one of the th limitations of the, the, uh, the office of mayor is that, um, is that um, well, for the most part, the, the county has the authority to place limitations on businesses. The city of La Crosse, uh, the mayor's office doesn't have a ton of authority when it comes to that. We can make recommendations and we can uh, challenge the authority of the county health department, but um, it's unfortunately there's, or fortunately, I, depending on your perspective, I don't know. I mean, I depending on who the mayor is, because in truth, there have been mayors in the city of La Crosse that I'm not sure I would have. I don't know if I would have given necessarily the authority to shut down businesses easily to. Uh, I think I would encourage as mayor, you know, it's interesting because I was, when I was one of the uh, families that I met when I was gathering signatures grant was a family who 
uh, their um, son asked me the question about about mask wearing, about how would you how would you make people wear masks? I think it was I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember what the, exactly the question was, but it was something like, how would you make people wear masks? And the truth is, I can't. The the mayor of the city of La Crosse can't make people wear masks. It's not. It's a law that's not in the books. What the city, the mayor of the, the city of La Crosse can do is lead by example. What the mayor of the city of La Crosse can do is lead by presenting an image of someone who is willing to sacrifice personal freedom for the benefit of the community. I think it's what you can do. Um, but again, uh, in terms of Capacity limits and shutting bars down or shutting businesses down or allowing various numbers of people in, that's left to county health departments. And there's not, from an authority standpoint, there's not a ton that the city of La Crosse Mayor can do about that. However, part of the collaborative model, part of the, the model of mediation among governments is for the La Crosse Mayor to, uh, you know, to be able to be someone who helps address those issues. To be able to be someone who can step in and at times be a grown-up in the room, depending on what the situation is. Whether it's, hey, there's too many people in bars without masks. Or there's, you're being too harsh on how businesses are treated. I mean, you know, there's a number of different ways to look at that. And uh, I frankly, from, there are so many businesses that have struggled during this pandemic bars and restaurants certainly one of them there's no question but many others as well that it would take a long and hard look to see if there are other ways to address those issues beyond uh, the restrictions uh that the capacity limits that have been put in place ted asks what does our election process look like moving forward if half the country does not agree with the outcome how Oops, let me see. Hold on. Yeah, see, this is a thing where I struggle to get that. Okay, there's another how there. There's another part to that question, but for some reason I can't get to it. So I'll answer the question. How, uh, what does our election process look like moving forward if half the country does not agree with the outcome? Great, great question. I believe that what we've just been through with the presidential election in the United States is, is not something that we're likely to see much of a guess. This is a guess. I, I just taking a stab, making a wild guess. And also there's an optimistic part of me that believes that we're not going to see that again in the same way. Um, for as long as there's been American elections, there's been allegations of fraud in American elections. The truth is, when these allegations of fraud have been evaluated and adjudicated, and we understand the outcome based on our system and the rule of law, it's at that point that we um, we need to move forward. And that should have happened a while ago in this election. So how do we move forward? What does our election process look like? I think for the most part, it looks like what we've already gone through. Um, I think that it, what this requires is that we have leaders that are willing to understand that our communities, our states, our nations of people, the people who we serve are more important than we are. Ted, if we can understand that, if we can focus on that, then I think that we can 
our election process is, is are, are going to be secure and they're going to be safe. And they're going to be something that we can depend on, rely on, and believe in. But the leaders have to lead. And the leaders have to be the ones that say this community and this state of, of the, these people that I serve are more important than me. And that's, that's just going to be all essential. I think that somebody asked me today, as a matter of fact, well, what do you think? There's 10 people running for mayor in the city of La Crosse. What do you think about that? Great. I love it. I think it's fantastic. If we have 10 people who are willing to step up to the plate and, and do the work and reach out to the people and engage the citizens of the city of La Crosse in order to become mayor and go through all the tremendous amount of struggle that, that it takes to be the mayor in the city of La Crosse. I'm all for it. I love it. But that just means that we have, we have 10 servants of our people who are willing to step up and willing to put their community before themselves. And if that, in fact, is the case, how can you not like that? How can you not be pleased by that? That's extraordinary. Uh, I did have another question in relation to the pandemic. I know that it was actually supposed to be the recovery, the pandemic, the recovery from the pandemic were supposed to be the things that we talked about um, this afternoon, this evening, rather, and uh, not something that we really addressed as much. But uh, Brent asked, kids going are going back to school. How do we keep them there? Uh that's an excellent question. I mean, really what that comes down to is us as a community committing to uh, following through the recommendations of limiting the spread of the coronavirus. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. We can, we're definitely hopeful that vaccines will roll out, that we'll be able to get vaccinated. And I'm hoping that we can get past the point where we believe that there's, there's, I, I guess, I'm at some point you have to put faith in something, right? Uh, in relation to science, and um, I have to believe that at some point that the the vaccines that uh, that are being presented to us are as efficacious as we're as we're being told they are. In other words, ninety four, ninety five percent, something along those lines. I have to believe that to move forward. So, at some point, hopefully, the vaccines are there. Um, hopefully, at some point, we can we can get past this uh dif the difficulties in relation to uh what we faced for a, it's gosh it's it's almost a year now um but how do we keep our kids in school see kids in school there've been st a couple of studies on this having kids in school is safe if we limit community spread of covid that's it Kids in having kids in school and safe, having kids in school and safe, safe for kids and safe for teachers. Because we got to remember that they're also extremely important when we talk about this, uh, talk about the dynamics here. Kids in school are safe if we have a limited community spread of the coronavirus. So, what I would say, Brent, to your question, how do we keep our kids in school if they're, when they're going back to school, as, as they're going back to school in the school district of La Crosse? How do we keep them there? We practice that safe behavior. That you think beyond yourself for... You know, just putting a mask on. Just think beyond yourself. Think beyond yourself when you're thinking about how you go about your, just how you socially congregate. It's hard. We just went through the holidays and so many people not with their families. Yeah, it's tough. I get it. But if you want to talk about ways to get back to normalcy, a couple of things, obviously vaccines, finding a way to get past the coronavirus in that kind of way. 
but limiting community spread is essential. Vaccine's part of it, no question. But doing our part to limit community spread is the best way to keep our kids in, in school and to keep our community safe. Not always going to be safe. Um, I've heard a lot of frustrations from people who have over and over again talked about how, you know, how few people the, this, uh, you know, the uh, conversation about death rates and all that. And, and, and truth, I, I also have a tremendous number of friends who work in the healthcare industry who are just exhausted. They're just beaten down. And hospitals that are overwhelmed, not necessarily right here, but in certain parts of the country. And we can address that. We can do things about that. And I think we should. But Nick, or uh, Brent, rather, the answer to your question is that it's, it's really about patterning. It's, it's, about, it's, it's about patterning the behavior that, that will help us emerge uh, safer on the other side. That's how we keep our kids in school. Is about making our it's 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 making our community safe. That's how we do it. Um, let's see. <laughs> That's a great one. All right, so I got one more, and I want to get to uh, one more. I had a good one. This is one of those times when I'm trying to get right to that the uh, the concept of what we're at right here, but it forces me to read at the same time that I'm trying to uh, deliver a, a message. And all right, we are going to have actually, yeah. So I started off at, at, when we were talking about the insurrection in the U S Capitol yesterday. Um, I did uh, glance over uh, this uh, idea of, uh, for those of you who are not aware of the Southside Kmart, well, I'm sorry, the Kmart, <laughs> the, the former Kmart, the place that used to be norm, normally known, formerly known as Kmart, which has been closed for three years or something like that, and sold a couple of years ago. Um, has been, no, it's been closed for four years, five years? Anyway, it that has been, um, there's uh, been a, a proposal to turn that into a U-Haul, a U-Haul place or something, like some big giant U-Haul storage yeah. facility which is just the worst possible way to use that land. And uh, what I was going to say about that is that one of the people in, in the neighborhood around that Kmart solicited ideas about what else to do with that space and how else, how to better use that. And it was fantastic, the ideas that came through. I mean, there was, gosh, I don't know, four dozen different ideas of how to use utilize that space that are better than a U-Haul storage facility. And if you are familiar with that plot of land at all, you know that that place, that property, seven acres, is at the, at the intersection of two state highways in the middle of a city is unbelievably valuable at some point for somebody with the right idea. Um, and it just goes against the the very concepts of smart planning to put a U-Haul storage facility there. Not that I have anything against U-Haul, by the way. I've actually used U-Haul in the past for something. Anyway, keep that in mind is that there are people out there who are really trying to solicit ideas to help make our community better. And that's really the point of what I was trying to say is that there are people out there trying to make our community better. One other acknowledgement, and uh, we're going to drop off here because uh, I wanted to plan this. This was supposed to be an hour, or I'm sorry, half an hour, and we've gone beyond that. But um, one of the things that I wanted to acknowledge is that tonight, the La Crosse uh, City Council holds its uh, finance and personnel meeting. And uh, I was asked by a community member to reconsider holding this uh, conversation, this question and answer session on a on a Thursday night at 6 p.m. because the finance personnel committee was meeting and and uh, it would be better for the community to be involved in city government in that kind of way instead of having this interaction with me uh, during a question and answer uh, session because there's a, you know we're only talking about uh, you know 10 candidates for mayor after all and 
all the things that go along with that. And I will acknowledge, I will acknowledge that it's very important for you to stay engaged with your city government, including being on top of whatever is happening within City Hall with the, the, the Finance and Personnel Committee or the whatever other committee that you want to watch. I've literally sat in hundreds of, of city council meetings, hundreds of them, and they can be incredibly entertaining. And it was really an oversight in some way on our part to really acknowledge how important this this meeting was. But we also understood that uh, there was going to be some conflicts with having a Tuesday and Thursday session where we were live and we're going to, you know, we're not necessarily going to, we were going to conflict with some things that you were going to do, some things that county government is going to do, some things that city government is going to do. And I encourage you to engage in those things because they are super important and, and, and probably, you know, depending on what the situation is at the end of the day, far more important than sitting here trying to interact with me. But um, next week, we won't have those conflicts, so we'll, we'll talk again. Now, I do encourage you to send me your questions. And I have a bunch of questions that I want to get to as we go forward here. And this is more of an introduction than anything. I want you to send me your questions. I don't, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers for a lot of things. I've had questions about SROs in schools. I've had questions about, again, you know, as we talk about the Kmart. But the questions about libraries and how I see the future of libraries. By the way, I'm going to spoil the ending for you here, but I think we need to invest more in libraries. There. I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on that more later, but... Uh, so, and, and then a lot of other questions as well in relation to uh, property taxes and floodplain. And, and like I said, there's a lot of people, a lot of issues in the city of La Crosse that the, that the mayor of the city of La Crosse is expected to address. And the mayor of La Crosse should address those issues. It's something he should do or she should do. So I'd like to hear more from you. So please send me your questions. And you know what? I will also, I'll send you an answer. Because I want to get to the question that that uh, Ben sent me the other day about uh, La Crosse County judges being soft on crime. Now, I, you know, the mayor of the city of La Crosse has zero to do with what happens in La Crosse County District Courts. Nothing. But I can tell you how, you know, how I feel about. Uh, about about crime and about our court system and about policing and about all the other issues that go along with that. I want you to send me your questions. Now, you can interact with me on MitchReynolds.com. That's my website, MitchReynolds.com. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy. You can also ask your questions during the live stream. Feel free to do that, as some of you have, and I appreciate that. You can email me your questions, Mitch Reynolds for Mayor at gmail.com. That's Mitch Reynolds for the number four mayor at gmail.com. Message me on Facebook. There are numerous ways that you can get a hold of me. Mitch for mayor on Instagram. I, I don't know how, how that's going to all work, but send me any type of your questions. You can, there's a number on our website, MitchReynolds.com. Feel free to call that number. And, and if you, if you don't, if you don't feel like you can text that number. You can call that number any way you want to get a hold of me. Ask your questions. Make your demands. Make this your opportunity to have your say in city government. Now, truth, I want to be your mayor. But I want to be your mayor understanding the issues that are important to you. I'd like to hear more from you. I appreciate you being involved tonight. Thanks so much. Please spread the word. If you want to go to our Facebook page, please like the page and uh, share our posts just to get more people involved. I'd love to hear more from you. And again, please, if you have any questions or any issues that you'd like me to address, please just send them to me. Again, MitchReynolds.com, our Facebook page, uh, MitchReynolds for Mayor, the number four, MitchReynolds for Mayor at gmail.com. Uh, there's a number on our um, on our website at mitchreynolds.com. You can call me or text me anytime and let me know how you're feeling.
Thanks a lot. Let's get to work.